guys, it's Jeremy here on Middle Music Meltdown, back with another video. What I have today guys is another album review. This time we're going to be checking out the 13th studio album for the mighty Dark Tranquility. One of my most anticipated albums of 2024. Always been one of my favorite bands and they put out just banger after banger. The last like three or four records have been killer. Uh, this new album just dropped on August 16th, through yesterday. And it's entitled again, End Time Signals. Uh, just over 50 minutes in length, 12 tracks in total. And uh, these guys have been on a hot streak. The last like three or four records have been killer. Uh, I love their last record in 2020, uh, Moment. It made my top 10 list of the end of the year. And uh, the previous records before that, Atoma, Construct, um, they've just been putting out banger after banger and I was really excited for a new album from these guys. Uh, so let's jump right in guys. Um, uh, to be honest, I was blown away by this record. It's really killer. It's kind of what I expected, kind of a continuation of Moment, that really stereotypical Dark Tranquility sound. A good mix of heavy death metal elements with his growls and then with his and then the opposite end with some really really beautiful kind of synth passages and melodies blended with his kind of crooning clean vocals he's definitely one of my favorite vocalists of all time he kind of reminds me of uh, michael alkofeld from opeth in the sense that he has one of the best kind of gravelly voices but his clean vocals are astonishing like really really rich deep uh, clean vocals. He's got one of a really beautiful clean vocal voice. One of my favorites in metal of all time, to be honest. Uh, so let's jump right into the album itself. Standard uh, first track of the album, Shivers and Voids. Uh, really good album uh, opener. Really banging song. Nice and heavy. Uh, up tempo. Uh, blast beats. Really good guitar riffs on this one. And his I love his growling voice because it's not that stereotypical death metal growl where you can't even understand what they're saying at all, where it just sounds like da 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 like that kind of thing. You can actually, he, he enunciates the words really well. You can actually sing along to it really well. It just, I, I love his, uh, his, uh, his growling voice. It's not quite full out death metal growls. It's kind of somewhere in the middle where it's really enunciated still, but you can, it still has the intensity and gravel and, and um, harshness of the death metal vocal, really good stuff. Uh, but yeah, opening track is killer. I uh, definitely agree with it. Should, definitely should have been the opening track. Really high intensity. Uh, like I said, good, really good heavy guitar riffs. Really good vocals on this one as well. Really good tune to open up the tra uh, album. And then goes right into Unforgivable, uh, which was I believe was one of the singles. And this kind of continues on, keeps up the momentum. A nice heavy track, really good guitar riffs. Good solo in this one as well. Good uh, blend on this album of like incorporating those like kind of synths to add melody and a lot of they really are really good at maintaining this kind of like really somber and like haunting kind of atmosphere in their music. I love it. It's always kind of dark and somber sounding. It's really nice. Even when he does the really crooning voice and the clean vocals, it's not like the uh, like a pop um, style melody. It's still very dark and like ominous and like somber. And I really love the way they capture that vibe in the music. Uh, but yeah, Unforgivable is another banger, really heavy track, really good stuff. Uh, Neurono Fire was a little bit different, had a different vibe to it, different unique sound. Uh, the synths on this one were very up forward in the mix. Um, so that one, they kind of took the foreground in the, in, the, in the song, a little bit more present in this one, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I prefer the synths to be used more as like a tool to add atmosphere or melody, etc. But they really worked on this song. I think it sounded really good. It added a good dimension to the album. A little bit more diversity, a little bit different sounding song. And at first, I kind of threw me off. But I, the more I listened to it, the more I kind of dug it. It's a really cool song. And then Not Nothing was another single. I love this track. It's heavy. It's got a good blend of everything this album kind of has in it. It's got the brutality of the death metal side. Really, really good clean vocals on this one. Uh, great guitar riffs, great solo. The synths coming in perfectly, building up that atmosphere. I find in all the songs in this album, they really build it up on each song. They kind of build and build, and they become kind of more epic and epic as the song goes along. Really, really good stuff. And um, Drowned Dead Voices was a really good tune, another pretty heavy banger. Um, not one of the more standout tracks, in my opinion. I think every track on this album is good. There wasn't any weak songs for sure, but... Um, uh, Drowned Dead Voices was one that didn't quite stand out as much to me. I didn't go back to it as much, but a really good track still. 
And then they kind of really shift gears in number track number six with uh, One of Us Is Gone. Pure ballad -y kind of song, really showcases his beautiful singing voice. I, like, I can't emphasize enough how, how much I love his clean vocals. It's just killer. Kind of like I said, it reminds me of Opeth, uh, Alco Felt. He's got that really just beautiful kind of like ethereal kind of voice. Um, Michael Stone's voice is a little bit, little bit, little bit deeper and has like a really rich tone to it. I just love how it sounds. But really good ballad, really beautiful song, kind of a good change in pace, just kind of break up the album a bit, but a really beautiful song, I enjoyed it. Uh, the Lost Imagination, um, again, used a lot of synths to create that atmosphere. A lot of, a lot of transitions in this song, but really beautifully done. Really smooth transitions from uh, part to part. Um, another song that didn't quite stand out as much to me, but a really good track nonetheless. Uh, Enforced per per, uh, Perspective was another banger, another heavy track. Uh, big riffs in this one, nice crunchy riffs halfway halfway through the song. And I love it also in One of Us Is Gone. It's kind of a slow ballady song, but at the midpoint, there's this big crescendo, like the musicianship of the instrumentation really swelled and gave it this kind of grand feeling to it. It's really nice. But going back to Enforced Perspective, like I said, big song, like the other one songs, it kind of built over time became this kind of big epic. I find their last chorus on the songs are always a little bit more epic or big and grandiose and uh, always finish off the song strong. Um, our Disconnect, um, it was just an okay song. That song was kind of a, just like a, kind of a straightforward mellow dust song. It didn't really stand out as much to me. It was pretty heavy still, had a lot of heavy moments, but it wasn't one of the standout tracks, but it was really good still. Uh, Wayward Eyes, I really dug this track. It had a really cool vibe to it. Again, another perfect blend of like the, the heaviness and the, the beautiful kind of crooning voice, nice contrast when he goes through those like gr guttural growl voices and then transitions into the clean vocals. Just, it really pops even harder. And then the synths with the guitar using it as a harmony does really, really good at creating this atmosphere and kind of a whole vibe to the music. It sounds very, um, genuine and like, um, like there's a lot of heart in this music. Like it's just so pure and like, but heavy, but beautiful and melodic and somber. It's hard to explain. It says like a, like there's a lot of feeling in this music, a lot of emotion. It's really, really good. Uh, after that, we got Bleaker Sun. Uh, the opening riff on this is really intense. Um, it almost starts off like a thrash metal song. Some blast beats come in and then it kind of tra transitions into the, their more typical mellow, uh, typical mellow death kind of sound, but definitely one of the heavier tracks on the album. Really good, a really cool tune. And then they finish off the album with another ballady song called "False uh, Reflection." Really good song as well. A little bit more dimension in the song than the other ballad, but I dig both of them. Um, I think they had a good variety on this album. The ballads, some more three or four tracks that were kind of more on the heavier side, more uh, more death metal kind of uh, influence. And then the other songs had just a really good mid-pace kind of blend of like the brutality and heaviness of death metal with some really crunchy riffs. But then to contrast that, some really nice guitar and synth harmonies and uh, to really create that background epicness and somber kind of dark feeling. Um, love this album. I wasn't disappointed in any way. Killer fucking album, guys. Right up there with Moment, their last release. Just really good album. I love the overall feeling of this album it's just so it feels so like there's so much emotion and it's so genuine and um like i said it just has a really cool feeling to it like a cool vibe just very dark and atmospheric and a lot of gothic kind of elements kind of reminds me of catatonia in parts where they kind of really have that somber depressive kind of dark feeling to it but in the best way really good stuff um so positives positives of the album production was huge it sounds really big, it's in your face. It sounds really grandiose and epic. I love the production on this album. The mix is really good. Um, everything is, sounds really clear, everything's distinctive and you can separate the instruments. Uh, drum work on this album is really killer. They did have a new drummer on this album and bass player I believe as well. They've had some lineup changes. I think Michael Stone's the only original member at this point, but um, yeah, but the... Um, Percussion team on this is really good. They sound really good and tight. 
a lot of a lot of dimensions in this album a lot of uh, different flavors different kind of vibes it's not kind of one dimensional just when start stuff starts sounding a little bit samey they kind of you know do a 180 and throw in a ballad or put in a song that has more synths in the front or you know they kind of change it up to add a lot of dynamics to the album and a lot of variety variety that's the word i was looking for a lot of good variety on this album um for downfalls i didn't really have anything ready gripes about the album to be honest maybe on um Nerado fire the sense were maybe a little bit too forward in the song for some people that might be a problem but i think it added a cool dimension and kind of a different sounding song that kind of had it sound a little bit different uh, but overall a couple songs that weren't quite as strong but definitely no bad songs on the album overall rating i'd probably give this fuck at least i'd give it a nine out of ten every time i listen to it i like it more and more it's a really really good album uh, definitely a contender for my year-end top 10 for sure I wouldn't be surprised if it made my year-end list, but we'll see what happens uh, for the rest of the year. We still got Opeth coming and some other big albums kind of down the pipe, but this is a really good album. I've been listening to it steadily since it first got kind of released on YouTube as like the full version of the album. Um, so let me know down below, guys, what you thought of the album. I'd give it a solid 9 out of 10. Really enjoyed it. Uh, just a fun listen. Beautiful music. Love his clean vocals. Really heavy still. Dark Tranquility does what they do best, and it's just a killer album. Uh, so again, guys, let me know down below what you thought of the album. Give it a ranking, and uh, until next time, guys, keep it metal.